In this video, I'm going to take you step by step through the entire process of creating your own business listing website using WordPress, Jet Engine, Jet Smart Filters, and Jet Search. We're going to create all the custom theme elements and create something truly unique. So grab a hot drink or a cold drink and join me and as I take you through that process. So to start this off, let's take a look at what plugins we've got installed ready to start building our custom business site. So I've gone through installed Elementor, Elementor Pro, because we want to use the theme editor. We've got Jet Engine, which is going to control all the dynamic information. Jet Search, because we want to add a generic kind of search across the top of the site. And Jet Smart Filters, we're going to use those for the filtering, the live filtering of all the data that we have listed on the different pages throughout our site. So there's the key plugins we've got. Now, I've also got a couple of other things in there, but they're not integral to how we work with this. They just installed as part of this to make my life a little bit easier. Okay, so with that said, let's go through and start creating the first most important stages of building out our custom business listing website. Now, if you're wondering why we're using Jet Engine as opposed to Advanced Custom Fields Pro, there's one key reason. Currently, Jet Smart Filters doesn't work with ACF or ACF Pro. It only works with Jet Engine. Now, hopefully they will address this in the future. So it gives us the ability to use either of these different plugins. But to get this working, we need to use Jet Engine. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. Jet Engine is a great plugin and works seamlessly with Elementor and gives us some extra features that we don't have or we'd have to find a workaround if we were using advanced custom fields. So that's the key reason why we're using Jet Engine as opposed to ACF in this particular video. So the first thing we need to do is create our custom post type. So to do that, we're going to simply come into Jet Engine. We're going to choose post types from there. And under this, we're going to go through and set up the custom post type that we want. So we're going to click Add New. We're going to call this Businesses. And we're going to give it a slug of businesses as well. So we know exactly what's going on. The labels, if you've never used Jet Engine or you've never used Advanced Custom Fields, whenever you log into the dashboard of WordPress. Whenever you come to things like pages, you can see you've got all pages, add new and so on. Well, if we come into the labels, we can edit any of those entries for our custom post type. So if we want to, we can put a post type singular name, the admin menu text, all kinds of different good things. You don't need to do this. You can leave it completely at default. However, it is useful if you're working with something that needs some form of explanation or you're working in another language and you want to put in language specific versions of any of the labels. Like I say, we're gonna leave that. So we're gonna close that down. Take a look at the settings. Now you can see most of the things there are set to yes. The only thing that we want to change on here is hierarchical. We're going to set that so we can have hierarchical businesses. Next up, we're going to come through and we're going to specify the menu position. We're going to set this to menu position one. So we're right at the top and then we're going to choose the menu icon. So we're going to come in and we're just going to search for an icon we want to use. So we're going to use business and we'll just use this option. Okay, so the final thing we've got at this section is the supports. Now, all this basically means is what are the default WordPress settings or default WordPress functions inside a custom post type do we want to support? You can see by default title and editor inserted in there. All we want to do is click in and you can see we can now choose any of the default options inside a custom post type. All we want to choose for this example is thumbnail. I'm going to choose that and there's the three key features we want to use. Everything else we're going to create in this custom post type are all going to be custom meta fields. So there's the first two sections done. Next, we need to go and create our custom meta fields. Now, before we do start creating the meta fields, let me just go through a couple of considerations that I've taken into account when creating our custom post type. We could do various different things like the business location and the business type and things like that. We could use those as just default meta fields. However, we want to use those to filter against. And I found that the best way of doing that is to set those up as custom taxonomies inside Jet Engine. Then we can target those through the Jet Smart filters and we can make those easy to work with and to filter out the data we've got on screen. Now, I'm going to keep this fairly simple in this particular tutorial, but you can obviously get as complex as you want, depending upon the type of content you're creating. We're just going to keep it really simple. We're going to use a business location and we're going to use a business type. Other than that, everything else is going to be a meta field. So let's create those meta fields. Then we'll jump over and create those custom taxonomies and associate it with our business custom post type. OK, first I'm going to do add a new meta field in there. We've got a couple of options we can work with. The first one that we want to do is put a title in. And this is what people are going to see inside the dashboard. So we want this to be self-explanatory and logical. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to put in business address. Underneath that, we need to put the name stroke ID. 
Now the name ID is basically the unique identifier for this custom post types field, this meta field. So always get into the naming convention. If you watched any of my other video tutorials on advanced custom fields or jet engine, you'll know that I've got a typical convention that I work with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in all in lowercase business underscore address. This just means that when I'm putting these custom fields in, it just makes logical sense. I don't put spaces in there because they're not recognized. We can use an underscore or a minus sign or the dash sign. However, I like to keep the underscore just because it makes life just that little bit easier. Next up, we've got the type of meta, meta field that we want to create. Now, by default, you can see the first option is text, but we can, if you want to, choose from a range of different options, depending upon the content that you're actually inserting into your particular meta field. Now, text is perfectly fine for this, Next up, we've got the description. Now, if you want to give the end user a description on what this particular field is actually for, what details need to be put into there, you can put that description there and that will then display as part of your custom post type. I think business address is pretty self-explanatory, so we'll leave that empty. However, you can populate it if you want to. Next up, we've got the field width, and this is just a design consideration when it comes to working with your custom post types inside the actual dashboard itself. For this, I'm gonna leave it to 100%, but if you want to, you can choose from any of the predefined options right the way down to 25%. So there's our first custom field. Next thing we're gonna do is add another one. So we're gonna come back in, and this time we're gonna say we wanna put a business strap line in. Now this is something that I just think is nice because it works well with the design. Obviously, entirely up to you if you want to use something like this, but sticking to that naming convention, we're gonna have business underscore strap line. So you can see all of my different meta description, so my meta names, for these particular meta fields are always gonna use that naming convention. Type of text is perfectly fine and field width of 100, again, is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go through now and add a couple more of these basic text fields in. Then we'll come back and take a look at some of the other field types that I'm adding into this. Okay, so I've gone through now, added in the custom fields that I want, all except for one. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Add a new meta field. This time, this is gonna be the business gallery, which is just gonna be a gallery of images for this particular business entry. So again, we keep the same things, business underscore gallery. Only difference we're going to do this time is choose the type to be images. So we're going to choose, come down and we're going to say we want this to be the gallery option. Now you see nothing else changes. Now if you're used to using uh, advanced custom fields, you will find that when you choose different field types, you do open up different options. However, Jet Engine does work in a slightly different way. In all honesty, a slightly simplified way. So you can see we still have the ability to add these galleries in and all these kinds of good things, but it does work slightly different over ACF. Okay, so there's our custom fields and all our meta fields added in. What exactly are the admin columns? Well, admin columns, as their name suggests, is when you look at the admin, for example, we're going to take a look at our list of businesses. We'll currently have just the business name and the actual date it was added. That doesn't give a lot of information away. So when we create custom fields, so things like business address, business website, and so on, we can target those and use those inside the actual listing itself, inside the admin columns listing. So let's just do that so I can show you what I'm talking about. So all we need to do is make sure that we know the actual name ID that we want, and then we can target and reference that. So let's use our business address. Let's just copy that so we make no mistakes. So I'll just right click, copy, what we're going to do is going to come down now to our admin fields. We're going to say add new column. This time we're going to call this one business address again. Then we've got the type. So we've got meta value, post terms, or custom callback. We want this to be a meta value because we're creating meta fields. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put the value from meta field in and we're going to drop that in there so we now know that's the right one. Then we've got the custom column order. So I'm going to set this to two so it'll come in at the second item inside the column structure. And if we want to, we can put a prefix or a suffix. So if we were doing something like working with financials, we were dealing with pounds or dollars or so on, we could, if we wanted to, then put a prefix in there, which would be the pound sign, the dollar sign, and so on. Whatever you kind of want, just to make the whole process of displaying those admin column information just a little bit more logical. Okay, so that's our admin column, our meta fields, and everything else set up. All we need to do now is scroll back up to the top, hit the add post type, and providing everything is in place, it'll then save that out and create our first custom post type. So there we go. There's our custom post type created. Let's just jump over to the businesses section, which is our new, newly created section, our custom post type. You can see we've got businesses and add new. Let's come into businesses. And you can see at the moment we have nothing in there because we haven't created any businesses. But what we do have is our custom 
information. So there's our business address waiting for that information to be put in. So when we create our first business and put in their address, this will be now listed inside those admin column fields. So you can add any more of those meta fields we created into there to make as much information inside the listing as possible, just to make it easier to find the right business and so on. So pretty cool, pretty easy to do. So now we've done that, the next thing we need to do is create those two different taxonomies, one for the business type and one for the business location. Okay, so we're going to do come to the Jet Engine. This time we're going to come in and choose taxonomies. So we're going to click on that. You can see now we've got a list of any taxonomies currently that's empty. We're going to say Add New. And once we've done that, you can see we've got a lot of the same options that we have inside the normal creating a custom post type. So let's go through these settings, set everything up, and create our first taxonomy. So the first thing we need to do is give it a name. So we're going to call this Business Type. Then we need to give it the slug. So again, we're going to create create that simple convention, business underscore type, keeping everything nice and simple. So the next thing is the post type. Now, you might think, well, what exactly is the post type? We're dealing with a taxonomy. Well, all this means is what do you want to associate? What post types, custom or otherwise, do you want to associate this taxonomy with? So what we need to do is click inside there and it'll show us a list of all of the available options. If we scroll through, you can see we've got posts and pages and media, the normal kind of places we can apply a taxonomy. But we've also now got our custom post type, which is businesses. So we'll select that and we now associate this taxonomy with the businesses. So when we create a new business entry, this taxonomy will be available inside there for us. Again, we've got the edit for all the labels so we can customize any of the labels that we see inside the actual dashboard. We're going to leave all those as they are. We're going to come down and we're going to say we want to set this to be the rewrite slug to be business type. And finally, we're going to say we want this to be hierarchical. Okay, so there's the settings and everything else. We've got meta fields again at the bottom. Now, why would we have meta fields within a custom taxonomy? Well, because we can then actually use those for various other things. Now, by default, a taxonomy just has the name. And if it's hierarchical, the name of the child and the parent, if applicable. We can also add in custom data. So for our example, we want to have a custom header for each of the different kind of sections. So when it comes to a business type, we might have coffee houses, we might have printers and so on. It would be nice to have a header image at the top of that just to make it look a little bit more interesting. So we can do that easily. Add a new meta field. We're going to call this header image. And again, the name of convention underneath header underscore image. Finally, we're going to come down, we're going to change this from being a type of text, and we want to set this to media. So now this means that with our custom taxonomies, we can now upload a custom header image. So with all those things in place, we're going to scroll back up, add our taxonomy, and there's our first taxonomy created. Now we can see that if we come to businesses, because we've associated this with the businesses, you can see we've now got business type, which is where we can start inputting our custom taxonomies. If we look at posts, you can see that taxonomy isn't there because it wasn't associated with posts or pages or anything else. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so there's our first taxonomy. We're going to come back and do the same thing again. So back to taxonomies, we're going to say add new, and this time we're going to do a business location option. So we're going to say business location. Same thing again with the slug. So business underscore location. And then finally, the post type is going to be businesses. And all we need to do then is come down and say hierarchical. We don't want any meta fields associated with this because this isn't something we're going to have a page for. So we're going to say add taxonomy. Once we've done that, we've now created our custom taxonomy. Come back over to businesses. You can see we've got business location and business type. So those new custom taxonomies have been associated with our custom post type and everything is now ready to start putting some data in and building out those templates. So let's go through and set up a couple of these taxonomy entries. First of all, let's come to the business type. So come back up to businesses, business type. And in there, you can see we've got what looks like a typical sort of taxonomy section inside WordPress. Nothing different other than the fact we've got this custom field that says header image. So we can start targeting those. So the first thing I want to do is create our first taxonomy for the business type. So we're going to call this art supplies. Slug, we're going to leave as is. We'll let that be auto-generated. Parent category, again, we have no parent for this. It's going to be his own parent. And description, if you want to insert that in there, we'll leave that as is. All we're going to do is choose media. Once we've done that, we're going to upload an image we're going to use for this. And we'll give that some alt text and we'll say art supplies. Once we've done that, we'll say choose media. So we've now created and link through everything we want. So we'd say add new category. That's now added that in there. So we've got the first one down. I'll go through and repeat this a couple of more times now for additional business types, and then we'll move on.
Okay, so there's our business types and you can see I've already created a subsection under design for graphic designers or graphic design. So we've now got a nice subsection we can call upon as well. So there's the business types. The next thing we need to do is business locations. Now this is going to be a lot simpler. This is just the location. And like I say, we need these in here for the way the jet engine is going to be set up to actually go through the search. I mean, so jet smart filters is going to be set up. So what we're going to do is put in a couple of locations. So we'll keep this really simple. And we'll just add a couple of new locations in there and obviously you can add as many as you want in depending upon your particular use case and we'll put one more in there for london okay so there's our location setup we've also got our business type setup so we come in now and add a new business we'll see we've got our custom post type and our custom taxonomies listed so Let's take a look. There's the title. There's the actual input area that we set up to be part of the default. And if we scroll down, you can see we've got featured image. However, everything else now is through, built through Jet Engine. So our business address, strap line, phone number, gallery, and so on. Our business location and business types down the right hand side. All those kinds of things are now set up ready for our custom post type. Now, there's one thing I want to sort of just say at this point. You can see that we've got the ability to add in business locations and business types. You may not want this to be the case. You may want this to be something that restricts the amount of information that we put up. So you can only tag into particular business locations or business types. There are various different ways you can disable this add new category section from this particular taxonomy area. I'm not going to cover that in this video because it's one of those things that you may want to, you may not. But you can have that in the back of your mind if you want to, especially if you're working with something that allows you to specify what different user groups can and can't do. You can set up an editor which would have access to this, but then limit them from actually creating new categories and new post types and so on. OK, so with that out of the way, let me go through and just create some content now for this first business listing. And then we'll take a look at moving on to creating the templates and how we're going to set up the filters and so on. So I'm going ahead and now pre-filled out the relevant information. As you can see, everything is filled out like you'd expect. The business gallery allows us to go through and see all the images we can delete from there, add more media, whatever we kind of want to do. I'm not bothered about the images that I'm using on here. These are just placeholder images, so you can kind of get a feel for how this all works. But there's our first business, so let's just publish that business. Once we've done that, let's just jump back out to the businesses listing. And you can see now we've got our business address being listed on there as alongside the title and the date it was published. So we can see now that's all working. Now I'm going to go ahead, add in a few more businesses so we've got some data, then we'll move on. There we go. There's all our businesses set up and associated with all the different locations and types we need to. So that's done. Next thing, let's set up the jet searches. So all we're going to do is come into smart filters. And inside smart filters, we're going to say add new. So the first thing you want to do is give this a name. So we're going to call this business type. Again, keeping things simple because we want to make sure that we can associate the relevant searches with the relevant data or taxonomies in this example. Just makes the whole process a lot more logical. Okay, so once that's done, we've got the label and the active filter to start filling out. So the business filter, we're going to again, we're going to call this business type. And then for the active label, we're just going to say type. Next up, we've got the filter settings, and this is a case of what type of filter do you want to use to find the information or filter the information out? Well, for this, we're going to come down and we're going to use a checkbox list. Because we've inserted these as the ability to go through and just check which business type or business location, we need to associate that with a checkbox list. Finally, what's the data source? In other words, where are we going to get the list information from to be able to populate our custom search or custom filter? All we're going to do, click on there, choose taxonomy because that's what we've created. And underneath that, we then go through and say, well, what taxonomy type is it? By default, it's pulling up categories. But what we need to do is just change that to, first of all, business type. Business type. Once that's done, we've then got the option to show only childs of current terms or group terms by parents. So we're going to say group terms by parents. Other than that, that's everything now in place. So we can come through and we can publish that. And that's our first filter created. We say add new. And we're going to create our second one now, which is actually go through and filter locations. So let's start off by giving it a name, business location, filter label, business location. And then finally, we've got the active label filter and we're going to set that to be location. 
Again, because we're using all the same settings, all we need to do is just come in and choose checkbox list. The data source is gonna be taxonomy. Instead of being a business type, we're gonna choose business location this time. And again, we say group terms by parents. So there's our two filter setup. Now, obviously, like I say, if you've got more filters you want to apply, you can just keep on creating those until you've got everything in place, and then you can reference those on any of the pages that you want. So let's hit publish on there, and that's our filters created. Now we can start building those templates to display the content. So the first thing we need to do is create a location-based page template. The reason I say that is because we're going to keep the full listing of all the businesses, should we say, to the homepage, or you may not actually want to even do that. You may just want to have people to go in and just choose a location, a business type, whatever you want, and then only show the businesses inside that relevant sort of type of business or location, and then apply filters to that. I'm going to show you both methods so you can use it as you wish. So the next thing we need to do is create the listing item as part of Jet Engine. Now, if you're unsure what a listing item is, if you consider the fact that when we have a list of businesses on an archive page, we're going to see small blocks. Each one of those blocks is going to have something like the, the name of the business, the photograph, the address, phone number, and then you can click through and go and view that business details. Each one of those individual entries is a list item, and we can create custom list items or loops inside Jet Engine itself. So what we need to do is come up to Jet Engine, and we're going to say listings. Once we're inside there, we can now create our first listing. So what we're going to say is add new, and we're going to call this posts is fine. Then you say posts from, and you can see we've got a range of different options in there. What we want is businesses. Once you've done that, we've got to give this a name. So listing item name, and we're going to call this business and create listing item. Once we've done that, we're going to go into Elementor as you normally expect, and now we can start creating the actual layout. Now, one of the things I'd recommend you do in here is if you jump over to the settings section, first of all, and come through the listing settings, what we can do is we can specify how wide we want this to be and what we want to use for the information. So the most says listing is posts and then from post type business. You can click and you see you can choose between posts and terms. And then you can see businesses, we've got post pages and so on inside there. So businesses is correct. That's what we want. What we're going to do is we're going to set this to be, we'll say 350 to give us a, a base example of what this is going to look like. We don't want it to be sort of full width. This is just a visual thing that helps you when you're designing. Okay, so there's the first thing. Let's go back to the widgets we have. All we can do now is we can scroll right the way down and you can see we've got a section called listing elements. Now this is part of Jet Engine and this is the easiest way of working because it gives us more flexibility over what we want to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull in a dynamic image. We're going to drag and drop that in like you'd normally expect. This will then just pull in one of the images that it's using for the example. So one of our business listings, that's perfectly fine. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull in some additional information. So I'm going to close these down just so we can streamline the interface a little bit and concentrate on the listing elements. So the next thing we're going to do is pull in a dynamic field. Drag and drop that in there. That will pull in what it thinks is the right information. So in this example, it's saying the post term data and title is what it's pulling in. So if we take a look, the source post term data is basically default information you have as part of a post type inside WordPress itself. If you want custom meta fields, you click expand that out and you choose metadata. For now, we're going to leave that to post term data and title is perfectly fine. And you can see we also have date, content and excerpt underneath there. So title is the name of this individual post. And even though it's a custom post type, it's pulling in the right data. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about styling this. I've already created the styles and I'm just going to simply apply those for speed. Obviously, when you are creating something like this, you're going to have your own set of styles that you're going to use. I just want to show you how we can create these various different elements. Okay, so there's the first part. There's the name of the actual business itself. Next up, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to right click this time though. We're going to duplicate this information and we're going to now change the content of that. So we're going to change that from post term data and we're going to go to metadata. And then we can put in the actual name of the meta field that we want to use. So we know this is called business because all of our different entries are called business underscore something. And this is a strap line. So we're just going to put in strap line. And you see that now pulls in the relevant data based upon the name that we gave that particular custom meta field. So there's the next part. What we're going to do now is we're going to come over and we're going to search for an icon. We're going to drag and drop the icon below that. And we're going to come in and we say icon library and now using the new 2.60 version of Elementor, you can see we have a much better icon library to choose from with over 1500 great looking font awesome icons. Obviously, if you want more than that, you have a font awesome account. You can also apply the pro versions into this and get even more of the icons that you want to work with. For now, we're going to stick with this and we're just going to say map and I'm going to pull in this map icon and we'll say insert and that drags and drops that into the relevant location. 
Again, we're going to come in, we're going to right click, and we're going to duplicate this field. We're going to drag and drop that down below our little map icon. Come back up, we're going to say business underscore address. And that will pull the address in for us. And then finally, we've just got the phone number. So again, we'll do the same thing again. We'll right click, we'll duplicate this, and we'll come back over and we'll say business telephone. And if I spell that correctly, it will pull in the relevant data. There we go. Now I want to place an icon before this. So what I'm going to do is come into the field icons and we're going to just search for phone. And then we're going to choose the phone icon. So there's the basis of the actual content itself. Now I'm just going to quickly apply the styling to it so you can see exactly what it's going to look like. But hopefully what this has demonstrated is it's very, very quick and easy to put this relevant data into it and build out these custom listing elements. And there we go. There's our listing element created. So all I need to do is save this or update it if I've already saved it. And now we're good to start using that inside our page layouts. So we come back out of this now and we can jump back into the, the template in section. So we're going to exit out of this. We're going to come into templates and we're going to come to the theme builder. Now we're going to create our first archive. So we're going to click on archive, say add new archive. Archive is perfectly fine. That's what we want to work with. And we're going to say this is going to be default archive space and we'll call this business create our template and that'll take us into elementor and we can start working with building up the content so we can close this down we don't need this we're going to work from scratch i'm going to close the navigator down just to make sure okay so what we're going to do first of all is create our layout so first things first let's click on there and we're going to set this to be a two column layout we're going to add a little bit of space above and below that so we're going to put padding of 50 above and 50 below just so we can keep this off our design so there we go that's the basics next thing we need to do is insert the list into this now so what we're going to do is we can come back out to the widgets scroll right the way down and once we're in there you can see we've got the option for listing grid drag and drop that into our page now currently it says please select a listing to show if we take a look on the left hand side you can see listing is the first option if we click on there any of the listings we've just created will now be listed available in there for us to choose from now we currently only have one which is the business loop listing so we'll select that and that will pull up all of the businesses now underneath that particular listing next up we need to go through and just configure a few options we can choose the number of columns that we want and we can also choose this based upon the device you're viewing it upon we then got the option for what status so we can make sure only publish, published items are displayed on here. Then we've got the post number, so how many posts you want to display on the page. You can set this to whatever value is sort of relevant to you. Also, you can put in your sort of error message if nothing is found. You can specify then if it's a masonry grid or if you're working with the equal column height. So there we go. That'll set that up on there for you. But what you can see at the moment is it's displaying all of the businesses. Now this is meant to be where we go through and choose a business type. So that doesn't work. We need to do something else. We need to come through to the post query. Now the post queries is where we can really start to gain and fine tune what you can see and what you can do inside Jet Engine. So at the moment, there's nothing associated with it. So we're gonna say we need to add an item. Now, once we do that, you can see it pulls it in as just a default generic item with nothing applied to it. Click on the type. We have five different options to currently choose from. Posts and parameters, order and offset, and so on and so forth. Now, you don't have to use just one of these. You can stack these on top of each other if you want to. So you can build things up to make sure that you get not only the information you want on page, but also how it's actually displayed. And if it's displayed, if it's date sensitive. What we're going to do is we're going to say we want a tax query. So that's going to search the taxonomy. Now, at the moment, you can see it says, well, what taxonomy do you want to search against? Well, we know it's a business type. So we're going to click on there and you can see there's our custom taxonomies, business location and business type. So we're going to say business type. Once we've done that, you can see nothing changes because we haven't told it, well, what business type do we want to work with? Now, at this point in time, we don't know what that business type is going to be because we're creating an archive page and that will change. So how do we do that? How do we deal with that? Well, when someone clicks on the link, for example, to go to coffee houses, WordPress is filtering that data. Even though you don't see it, that's what's going on behind the scenes is that data is being filtered. We just need to tell this archive page what filter to accept. Might sound a bit complicated, but it's not really that bad. So we set up the type and we set up the taxonomy. 
Now you've also got operators if you need to use those. So if you want to get more complex in how things work, you can use those and also what fields and things like that. We don't want to deal with any of that. All we need to worry about is the terms section. And in there, we're going to put in the terms we want to do, which is for this example, the current ID. So when someone clicks on a link for coffee houses, we are filtering that data behind the scenes. So what we need to do is come into the terms section and we're going to start off with a symbol. We've got the percentage mark. After that, we want current underscore ID, and then we're going to close out with the percentage mark again. So that's anything that's inside those percentage marks is going to be considered by Jet Engine to be a filter that's going to use or a term filter. And that's what we're doing. Now, currently, you see nothing on there, and there's a reason for that. Not because we've done anything wrong, just because we haven't told this archive what data to use. So it's automatically pulling in incorrect data. So we come to the settings section, we come down to preview. You can see at the moment it's saying recent posts. Well, what we want is the business type archive. So we're going to say business type archive and all is fine. So we say apply and preview and that then pulls in one of our businesses. Now, if you see nothing appear on there, what you can do is you can come up and you can just start typing in one of the categories, one of the business types, you know, you put in there. So for example, if you want restaurants, you can start typing that in. It'll then filter that out and show you anything that matches that. You can hit apply and review or preview that will then update the data and show you that information on screen. So there's the first part done. We've created our listing archive. We now need to put the filters in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to just close some of these up a little moment. And once we've done that, we're going to come down and what we want is the filter that we want to use. Now we've created these as checkbox filters. Now this is something you need to be aware of whenever you create a filter and you specify a type when you want to pull that filter type in, you have to use the relevant widget. So if you just select filter, for example, it wouldn't pull the data in because it's the wrong filter type. So checkbox filter is fine. So we're going to drag and drop that into there. Then we're going to say, well, what filter do you want to use? So we can click on there and you can see we've got business type and business location. Those are the two we set up right at the beginning. So we're going to say this has to be a business location because we're already looking at a business type. So this is just going to filter it out based upon the location of, in this example, restaurants. Now, even though that's pulled the data in, you can see we've got the relevant locations. We've got to tell it what is the filter for. So we click, it says this filter for, and click on there, you can see we've got a lot of options. And depending upon how you built things, like if you're using WooCommerce, you could use this to filter WooCommerce. However, we've used Jet Engine to create this. So we're going to say Jet Engine, so it knows what data to filter against. And this is where I go back to the beginning of the video where I said, at the moment, we can only use Jet Engine to use these Jet Smart filters. We can't use ACF or pods or anything. This is where you can see that that's not available to you. So hopefully in the future, like I say, we will have access to working with ACF and other custom post type sort of creation software. For now, we're kind of limited to just using Jet Engine. Okay, next up, you've got the apply type. We're going to leave that to Ajax because we don't want the page to reload. And we say apply on and you can choose between value change. Or if you want to put an apply button, you can put an apply button in there. It's up to you how you want to build this out. So there's our basic location filter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to apply some styling to that, and then we're going to test that page out once we set up the conditions for when this is going to be used. So there's the basics of the page created. Let's come into publish. And once we're in publish, we can now specify where we want to use this. Now at the moment it says all archives, which is not what we want to do. Now click on there and we're going to come down. You can see we've got under business archive, we've got a range of different things that we can associate this with. What we want is just to pull this in to the relevant type. Because we're dealing with business types, we want to say associate this with business type and then set that to all. So we're saying that all of the business types will use this archive page. So we say save and close and we've now created our archive page. So next thing we can do is take a look at how we can use this and see just to check that everything is working the way we expect it to. So I've hopped over onto the test page for the site now. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and created a menu that puts our business types into there. So we can come through, we can just click on any of these and we can view the relevant businesses under their relevant section. So everything is working the way you'd expect. Come back into our art supplies. We've got a couple of businesses. We can now use our live filters on the left hand side to filter that information out. So we can see we've got one in Cardiff and we can say click on Cardiff and you can see that's associated with that. We come in and try London. If it's a London-based business, you can see currently there are no art supplies businesses in London. 
and you can come in you can click on bristol and see anything that's associated with the bristol account now ignore the address on there that's just me putting relevant and irrelevant data in but we can also build these up so we can see we want to find all the art supplies businesses in both bristol and cardiff so you can see we can create multiple filters inside the one section so we've checked that out everything is working the way we'd expect it to which is pretty cool now that's pretty cool but there's one other thing i want to do to our template before we wrap this particular section up I've come back into my theme builder and I'm going to come back into our business type archive we've just created. We're going to edit that with Elementor and we're going to put a nice section across the top that's going to reference both the name of this particular category that we're looking at and also the image that's associated with this particular category or type, I should say, business type. So we'll come up, we'll click to add a new section there. We'll just set this to be one row and column. Once we've done that, we're going to just click to select it we're going to come over to advanced oh so we're going to come back over to the widgets and we're going to say we want the archive title now you have to be creating and working with an archive template to see these archive specific widgets if you don't see those chances are you're not you working with an archive so just bear that in mind if you don't see those so grab the archive title drag and drop that over there and what that's going to do is that's going to pull in whatever we set up to be the preview archive type that's perfectly fine. Next thing I'm going to do is just come up to the style section and we're going to just make sure that we've got this all selected. Styles and we're going to come into background. We're going to choose dynamic from there and we're going to say custom image under jet engine. Once we do that, we can click on the little wrench icon and we now have the option for select. And in there, we've got the header image and that's what we want to work with. That's the header image that we set up as part of the actual custom taxonomy that we created for the business type. So let's hit on edit header image. That will preload that in for us. I'm going to close that down. We'll just set some basic positioning. So we'll say center, center. We'll have no repeat on there and the size will be cover. Next up, we're going to come up the background overlay and we're going to set a nice solid color over the top of that. So we'll say a nice black color over there and we'll set the opacity to about 0.7 just so we can get some nice separation. The final thing I'm going to do is going to quickly style that just to make sure everything looks the way I want it to and makes it stand out. So I've already pre-set up these styles. So I'll paste that style in there. And we'll just select this and we'll just come in and we'll say we're going to edit this section. I'm going to add in some padding and margins at the top. So we'll say 150 at the top, 150 at the bottom, and we'll put 20 left, 20 right. Now, obviously, I'm only setting this up to work on desktop, but everything you do to work under mobile settings, whatever you're used to working with with Elementor, you can go in and do that. So you can just style this based upon what device has been viewed upon for the size, the padding, the margin, and so on. I don't need to cover that. This is more advanced tutorial, so you should know all of that already anyway. Okay, so we'll update this page. We'll jump back over to our test sample page. We'll refresh that, and we should now have our nice heading set up on there. So let's just refresh that page, and there's our nice heading that says what section we're in. If we jump into coffee houses, you can see now it tells us we're in coffee houses, and we just start to see coffee businesses, and we can start to filter those out based upon their location as well. So pretty cool. So there's the first section, the first template created. Now let's go ahead and create the home page or what we're going to use as the business listing page for all of the businesses. And we'll add some additional features into there as well. Okay, for this section, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're not going to be working with templates. We're going to be working with just a typical WordPress page. So I've jumped over into the pages section and we're going to click to add a new page in. We're going to call this home page. We're going to set this as the basic default home page on the site. Now, obviously, if you are working with a business directory with thousands of businesses, this wouldn't necessarily be the best way of doing it. But this is just another way that you can work with this. And if you wanted to, you could have your home page, which would just list the latest 12 businesses. Or if you wanted to set up featured through a checkbox that says this is a featured business, there's a multitude of different things you can do with this. These are techniques you can take, expand, and do whatever you want to with them. Okay, so with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to create this homepage we're gonna leave everything as is we'll publish that then we'll crack into Elementor and start building out our actual page design so a couple of things I want to do on here first of all because we're using the hello theme I want to get rid of this page title because it's unneeded to do that very easy come to the settings section hide title if you want to go through and globally remove this I've also created a short quick video that'll take you through how to do that through the functions PHP file link will be in the description below so you can check that out instead of having to do this on a page by page basis so the first thing we want to do is create a header section. So I'm going to simply come over, click to add a one row, one column section in there. I'm going to leave that unstyled with no content at the moment, just to focus on the main bread and butter of this particular page. So let's create another section. We're going to set this to be a split into two sections. We're going to have our filters on the left hand side and our actual listings on the right hand side. So first things first, let's go through and add in those relevant different searches or the filters. To do that, all we need to do 
come up to our widgets, scroll down to the bottom, and we want the checkbox filter. We're going to drag and drop that in for the first one. Once we've done that, we're going to say select our filter, and we're going to say this is going to be business location, first of all. Filter for jet engine, like I explained the last time we did this. Everything else we're going to leave as is. Then we're going to come down and do the same again. So we're going to come back out of this, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to say another checkbox filter, which we're going to drop underneath that. This time we're going to choose this to be business type. As you can see, everything lays out nicely. And again, all we need to do is set jet engine in there. So there's our basic filters in place. I'll drop in some styling and things in a moment. Before I do, let's just come back over and let's just drop in a heading for the first one. And we'll do is we'll just set that to be location. And we'll just duplicate that. And we'll drop that underneath and we'll just say this is going to be business type. Like I say, I'll go through and style this a little later. So once we've done that, we've now got the relevant filters in there. Now we need to pull in the actual data for our business listings. So to do that, again, on the left-hand side, we're going to scroll down. We want listing grid. We're going to drag and drop that into our page. Come back over to our listing and say we want this to be the business loop listing. We're not going to apply any filters to this. We're just going to leave that as is when it comes to that because we want all of our businesses to display at this point. We can say we want this to be equal column height if we want to. We can also come into the post query and we can say, let's just add a post query in here. This time, instead of using that tax query or meta query or any other kind of query, we're just going to say order and offset. Now, what we can do on here is we can say, how do we want to order these and what do we want to order them against? Currently, it says the date, but what we want to do is the name. So we're going to say the name. You can see descending is perfectly fine. So we've got the art shop, eat unique, and so on. We can specify that if we want to be ascending. So we can control exactly how these are going to be displayed. So once we've done that, and we'll leave those as they are, so they're now in alphabetical order, everything is pretty much in place. So let's apply that styling to this. So let's just drop our header section in now. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up and we're just going to drop some styling on there. So paste our style, you can see it pulls the image that I want in the background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a title to say what this is about. It's a business directory. But then we're going to put a basic global search, which allows us to specify what categories we want to search against. Now, this is the Jet Search plugin. You can use the normal WordPress search or the normal Elementor search. But what this one does is it allows you to specify what you want to search against and if you want to use filters on that. So for example, we only want to search against our businesses and we only want to search inside relevant categories. So let's just see how we do that. What we're going to do is we're going to first of all, just bring in our header. So we're going to put our header in there. And now we're going to go through and we're going to put in our actual search form. So let's come back out of this. We're going to scroll down until we find Ajax search, which is under jet elements. We're going to drag and drop that into our page and there's our search widget. So we've put everything in there. We just need to now go through and configure exactly how that's going to work. So we can style this any way we want. Now we've already done the styling on this. So I'm just going to simply copy and paste that style onto it. There we go. There's our styling setup. Now at the moment, this is just a generic search across everything. We don't want it to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say exactly what we want to search against. So we're going to say show categories list. We're going to click on there and you can see it says categories. We can click and expand that out and we can say that we want to have based upon business type. We click on there. We click and expand that out. Now you can see it replicates the same business types we've got listed as part of our jet filters. So what we're saying now is we're only going to search inside that particular custom post type, which means that we get a much better search based setup that's only going to search against that and not any other content we might put in as part of normal WordPress. However, before we finish that up, there is still one thing we need to do. Come to the search settings and underneath there, it says search in. So even though we've got those categories listed, when we search, it's not going to just limit it to the businesses. So we can click on there and you can see it pulls up any of the post types we have. So we've got posts, pages and our custom post type businesses. Click on there. That's now going to restrict that search for us. If we want to, we can go in and fine tune and specify exactly how this search is going to be displayed and tweak fonts and so on. I don't need to do that for this example. I just wanted to make sure you can see how it all works. So one final thing I want to do before we test this page out is just come in and apply a little bit of spacing above and below this main section. Then we're going to hit update and we'll set this to be the main home page of the site and we'll take a look at this in action. So what we need to do, come back at this, exit to our dashboard. We're going to come down to our settings under reading. And underneath there, we're going to say we want to set a custom homepage and we're going to set that to be homepage. Save our changes. 
We can come back over now onto our site. We'll refresh this just to make sure we've got the most up-to-date version. And then we'll click on Home. And there's all our businesses. So what we can do now is we can say we want a few art supplies. Click. We filter that out. We want art supplies in Cardiff. Click. We apply a second filter to it. So you can see we can very quickly and easily build up more complex filters just by using these different options on the left-hand side. We can apply it to multiple different locations, multiple business types, or a combination of both of those. So we've done the basics. If we come back up to the top here and we just say, let's just type in supplies. You can see that now filters out and shows us only art supplies. And again, we can if we want to filter this down. So if we said coffee houses and we type in supplies, well, obviously we have nothing that matches that criteria. So we've got a nice Ajax search at the top. We've got filters at the left hand side. We've got businesses being listed. One final thing we need to do, because obviously we have no idea how many businesses are going to be displayed. We need to put some form of pagination in. It's very easy to do. I'm going to come back out of this. We're going to go back into our page. I'm going to come back in to all pages and open up our home page. We'll edit that with Elementor. And what we'll do is once that's loaded in, we'll scroll down the page and add in our pagination. So if we just come in and start typing pagination, there we go. So we can drag and drop that into our page. What's the pagination for? We can click on there. It's Jet Engine. Again, because we're using Jet Engine to build out this custom post type. And other than that, we can now go through and style things and specify whether we want to have the previous, next, and so on. So we've got all the functionality we need on this page. We'll update that and save that out. So we've now created the archive page. This allows us to filter based upon the business type. We create the home page, which will list all of the businesses with filters and a search at the top. The final thing we need to do is create that custom single post page that allows us to see the details of the business. Currently, if we come over and we just click on any of these businesses, you can see at the moment we can't actually even click on them. So we need to sort that out as well. Easily done. Let's come back out of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back out, exit to our dashboard. And this is where the beauty of Jet Engine and these custom listings comes in. Because we've applied that in multiple different locations, all we need to do is come back into Jet Engine, into listings, edit our loop. Once we edit that, we can now assign various different parameters. So we can say we want this image to be clickable. So we can select that. Once we've got that image selected, we can now go through and specify that we wanted to do something. At the moment, it's not set to be a linked image. Click to make that linked. What's your link source? You can see we've got permalink and we've got a range of other things on there. Permalink is exactly what we want. So we'll update that. We'll jump back out to our page and refresh this. And we'll find now that it's available for us to click on this section and takes us through to the unstyled, unset up sort of single post page. However, if we come to the art supplies and we click on a different one, you can see that's also set up to be a link through. So because we're referencing that one simple listing section, any change we make to that will reflect and filter out through the entire site. So pretty cool how that works. So now that we've dealt with that, let's go through the process of creating our new single post page. What we need to do, jump back over into our dashboard, exit out of this, and we're going to come into our templates again. So we're going to type templates, theme editor. This time we're going to create a single. So we're going to click on single, add a new single in there. Single is perfectly fine. Select the post type. This is going to be businesses because we want this to apply to our custom post type that we created. Click on there and we're going to call this default business single. I always like to sort of specify exactly what template I'm working with as part of the template name. Create our template and we're going to end up with our nice blank single template ready to start working. We can close this down. We've got no designs we want to work with. We now have a blank canvas to start building things out. OK, so we're heading towards the home straight now. We just need to create this last template. So let's go through like I've done previously. I'll just show you how you can pull the data in. Then I'll style it separately just so you don't have to sit around watching me doing the boring stuff. So first things first, let's come in and let's just grab a header section. Here, we're going to just drop in the actual header image. So again, we're going to be using dynamic data for pretty much all of this content alongside some basic filler information just to flesh out the page, give you an idea of the direction you could go in. OK, so we're going to select this top section. We're going to come up to the style section and we're going to come into the background, hit dynamic again. And from there, we're going to choose featured image. Simple as that. Set our positioning. Center, center, no repeat, and we're going to set this to be cover. Finally, we're going to come into the background overlay, and in there, we're simply going to drop in a background color like we did previously, just to make sure that the text stands off a little better, and we'll set this to about 0.7 opacity. Okay, so there's our header section in place. The next thing we need to do is simply drop in the content that we want inside there. Come back out to our widgets, we're going to drop in the post title, 
Once we drop the post title in there, we're going to put a little separator line in. So we're going to come in and choose a divider, drop that in there. And finally, we're going to come back out and we're going to just say we want to use a custom heading section. So we're going to drag and drop that below our line. And in there, we're going to choose dynamic again. And from there, we're going to come down to our custom fields. Once you've chosen our custom field, we're going to come in and we're going to use the business strap line. And that will then drop in the strap line for us. So we've got the basics in there. I'll just quickly style this now the way that I want it to look. So I'm going to simply just choose a couple of the options that I've got set up in my other template. And we're going to come in and we're just going to fine tune and tweak this. So nothing too spectacular, all very simple, very quick and very easy. So we'll paste our style in there. Do the same for our lines and so on. So there's our basic styling for our heading setup. And what we're going to do is like we've done before. We're going to come in, we're going to split this into two sections. We're going to have the main information in the left-hand section. We're going to have a sort of right-hand column as well. So let's just add in a little bit of padding on top and the bottom of this, just so we can give it a bit of breathing space. There we go. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to drop in our little gallery slider at the top here. So we're going to come over, we're going to just choose carousel. So we want the image carousel. We'll drag and drop that into place. Now we can add images or we can pull in dynamic data. So we're going to pull in the dynamic data from the gallery field that we created as part of Jet Engine. And you see, once we choose the dynamic option, it shows us only the locations we can actually grab images from. We don't want the post image attachments. We want the Jet Engine gallery. So we'll click on that. Now you'll see nothing appears on there. And that's because even though we said Jet Engine gallery, we haven't shown, told it which gallery. So if we click on the little wrench icon, click on there, you can see it says field to select. Choose that, and we've only got one, which is business gallery. So if you had a custom post that with multiple images in there, or multiple galleries, I should say, you can easily reference whichever one you want into the relevant location and widget. So there we go. There's the basics of that particular widget. Again, all I'm going to do is just copy and paste those settings from my template. So we'll just come in, copy and paste style. And what we need to do is just adjust some of the settings on here. So we're going to set this to be the size, one, one image on there. That looks pretty good. We can have it to automatically transition if we want to. We can set up any kind of things that we want on there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to select this and we've got our first image set up. So there's our slider already configured. Next thing we want to do is drop in a map on the right hand side. So again, we're just going to come into the widgets. We're going to scroll down if we find Google Maps, drag and drop that into place. Choose the dynamic option and come down to a custom field and then choose the custom field we want, which is the business address. So provided we've got an address put in there correctly, it'll pull in the relevant location and we can just adjust the zoom level on there to get exactly what we want. So there's our zoom level in place. We'll just style that up a second. So we'll just paste our style in there. So there's our styling, all nice and consistent. Okay, so there's the first two parts. Next thing we need to do is put in the actual business details. Now this is very easy to do. We're going to simply come over and we're going to choose part of the jet engine plugin. So this time we're going to come in and we're going to say we want a dynamic field. Before we do that, we're going to come over and we're going to drop in a basic element, which is an inner section. We're going to drag and drop that below there because we're going to have the name of what we're talking about. So, for example, the address, the telephone and so on on the left hand side and then the actual data that's being pulled in on the right hand side. So what we'll do is we'll just adjust this a little bit to set this somewhere to about 33 percent. And in there, we're just going to simply come in. We're going to grab a heading, drop that into there. And we're going to set that to be left aligned. We're going to set it to H5, so it's nice and small. And we're going to set this up to be our address. Okay, so we'll put a colon after that. Final thing I want to do is make sure we've got this intersection selected. And we're going to say we want this to be vertical line is going to be middle. So everything is nice and centralized inside there. Come back out, scroll down to our widgets at the bottom, pull in our dynamic field and drop that into the right hand side. Change that from post to metadata. And in there, we're going to drop in the field that we want, which is, as always, business underscore and then the name. So address. Give that a second or so. And there we go. That's pulled in the data. Now, instead of going through this process over and over again, <clears throat> what we can do is simply come in, copy that or duplicate, I should say. So we'll duplicate that. We'll duplicate it four times in total. So we'll just duplicate and duplicate one more time. Then we can just change the bits that we want to change on there. So we can say telephone. The next one is going to be email and finally we're going to put in the website address so there we go now we can just change what data is being pulled in so this one's going to be business underscore telephone business underscore email and finally oh wrong one that should still be address I set that to email 
And finally, we want business website. So there's our data. Now we're just going to quickly go through and do a few things on there. Now at the moment, the email and the website address are non-clickable. So we need to rectify that problem a moment. Let's come back to this. Sorry. That needs to be telephone. Okay. So what we can do with that is we can select this and then we've got the option for filter field output. If we click on there, we've got a range of options and the callback drop down. So we'll click and expand that out. And what we can do is say make clickable. Now, this is intelligent enough to know that because we've got an email address in there, it's going to prepend that with mail to. Same thing goes then for the website address. So we'll do the same thing again, filter field output, make clickable. Again, because it knows this is a website address, it will now put that through the relevant data. So pretty cool, pretty useful. We just now need to go through the process of quickly styling all these sections before we move on and put the next block in. So the final thing we need to drop in now is the actual description for the business. Easily done, come back over underneath the single section and what we want is the post content. So we're gonna drag and drop that down underneath making sure that everything looks the way you want it to. And then we can just style that very easily. And we paste our style in there. So there's our style set up. So we've now got all the key elements in. We've got the name of the actual business, their strap line. We've got their location. We've got the little image slide that we want. Details about the business itself and their information. Now, obviously, if you want to, you can do things like the most recent businesses that have listed and signed up to this particular website, all those kinds of good things. But ultimately, that's the basis of this particular template finished. All we need to do is click on publish and then assign the conditions we want to use this in. So the moment it says businesses all, so what we can do is just make sure that everything is set up the way we want it to be. So businesses all is looking pretty good. So we'll say save and close. And that should be done. So what we can do now is jump over to our test page, refresh this. Once that's refreshed, we should find now that if we click on any of these businesses, we'll go through to our newly designed layout. So you can see there's our custom single post template, all set up, all done nice, neat and tidy. Come to any of the other businesses, come through to this one, click, go through, and you can see there's the information about the coffee house. And we've got a nice slider set up so we can go through and transition through those images view all the business details and click on any of the links that are associated with those business details. So we've ticked off quite a few different skills in this particular video. We've gone through the process of creating our own custom templates. We've used a bare theme like hello. We've created custom post types, custom taxonomies, custom filters, searches, tons and tons of different things. And hopefully what this should demonstrate is how you can leverage the power of custom fields and custom post types, along with these filters and searches and so on to create much more unique websites. And ultimately, if you're doing this for clients, make Make more money, which is always something that we're looking to do. Now, if you want to get more out of working with custom websites with advanced custom fields, jet engine and so on, take a look at the videos that are on screen right now and also the playlists in the description below. They're going to get you up to speed in double quick time. Now, speaking of the description below, all the applicable links for everything we've used in this video are in there. Some are affiliate links and they do help support the channel, but they cost you no more money. Well, as always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.